if you look at the Indian PV industries, you know, after 2010 onwards, we have installed somewhere as 28 gigawatt plus. And uh, out of them, I think 95% or maybe 96% is polycrystalline material, you know. Mono, I will say, I mean, the efforts are going on from 2017 onwards. But when I have worked and also Siddharth, we have worked, you know, I mean, as we told that those days it was a mostly monocrystalline material and four inch dia, you know, and it was a alkaline etching. So if we go into the technology, like, you know, you should make a kind of a small micro pyramid to absorb sunlight, right? Now, to absorb the sunlight, you know, if it is alkaline, it's a one zero zero crystal orientations, and how you make a small micro pyramid and absorb your light, you know? But when we go for a polycrystalline material or multicrystalline, there are thousands and thousands of brain boundaries, you know? Mm -hmm. So there is a, another method is called the acid texturing, HFHNO3, which is called aqua regia, you know? But it has been a very controlled temperature, five to seven degrees Celsius. And the etch rate, etching is both the sides, you know, in the chemical etching and through the conveyor, you control this etching. So, the, but if you look into the surface finish after the texturizations, you know, it's much, much better. May, maybe around 10 years back, you know, the acid texturing was not very popular, you know. So it was like, you know, uh, if you look the installations in the poly, like you can see the after PCBD, I mean, anti flexion coating and all, you'll see the green boundaries are very, very prominent. But today's, uh, you know, the texturing is done in such a uh, controlled way, you know. You, you can't distinguish, you know, rather than the physical dimension, like pseudo square is the mono, and for poly is a perfect square or something like that. So you can distinguish uh, only through the uh, geometrical dimension, geometrical dimension. Otherwise, you can't dimensions like, you know, whether it is alkaline etching or acid etching, you know. So if you look into the um, overall uh, quality side, what uh, DKO was talking about, you know. So one is that is called IC61215, particularly for crystalline silicon, but uh, that is a kind of a certificate or you can say an ornaments, right? But if you look the detail of those particular, the test, you know, which, uh, which Siddharth was talking, you know, he is uh, uh, talking to several supplier, try to understand you know, how you have measured and ensure that your LID, light induced degradations is minimum. So what do you claim like two and a half percent after first year, maybe subsequent year 0.7%. So if you look into the warranty, uh, there are two warranty what we talk. One is called the product warranty for 10 to 12 years, depending on the kind of uh, uh, the module. The other one is the performance warranty. So performance warranty normally for monofacial, uh, what do you talk about the module and tedlar best. Uh, tedlar best is the conventional. Front side is the glass and back side is a, rather than tedlar or back seat, what we say, you know, right? But there are certain materials which are coming is called glass, glass modules, you know, where after the first year, two and a half percent uh, degradations, says second year onwards, you know, so the deg deg degradations are much, much less. It is 0 0.35 to 0 0.4 percent, I mean, compared to your backseat material, you know. So the new products are also coming and there are several certifications, you know, agencies are there which are uh, making this kind of a IC test. As far as the BIS is concerned, so we have to look into these things, you know, I mean, there are uh, still only two laboratories. Uh, one is a high physics lab in Pune and in, uh, I think, in uh, Bangalore, huh? right? That's what you back. Nice. But NICE is a dedicated, you know, uh, they are doing a special research, you know, they are also collaborating with uh, Fraunhofer Research Institute, ISE, you know, right? So uh, that kind of, you know, all the regular tests they are doing, they are not doing, you know, so the sufficient labs are not there to carry out this kind of a test. So looking into the technology perspective, you know, if we look at the module feature earlier was a 1600 volt DC, you know, now 1000 volt and coming to 1,500 volt. So in the system design, so that I can do, uh, throw something like, what is the advantage in terms of the system design when you go for uh, 1,000 to 1,500 volt and how it will be economical for us, you know, in future and uh, with your uh, experience on some things, right? Yeah, again, I'm saying that from the point of uh, view of IPP or developer, we always look for that target uh, return 
at a, you know, <clears throat> so in, to achieve that, you know, we experiment with technology, we experiment with different material. And while doing so, we see that, you know, if, uh, when we started our career, that, that time the system voltage was 800 volt, and after that 1000 and then 1500. Now people are talking about 2000 volt also. So more the voltage, you have more models in series. You know that when you connect model in series, your voltage increases. So you can have more uh, model in series, so you have lesser number of strings per megawatt. When you have lesser number of strings per megawatt, your mismatch loss, losses comes out. And there are other advantages of 1500 volts, so your total number of, uh, you know, the number of modules in a, in a part zone will come down. That way we, we save a lot of cables. The number of strings comes down, the number of cables come down. So you can optimize a lot of, uh, you know, uh, system design. Another thing also, you, the more you efficient model, lesser the BOS cost and lesser the BOS footprint on the ground. You need lesser ground space, you need uh, lesser MMS, you need lesser uh, cable. So in that way, you can optimize your LCO is much, much better. Uh, so these are the things then. Uh, so in the BOS design, what he has already told that we can have a, a, a better pricing on terms of when you go to 1000, 2500 volt. But uh, on the module side, one should be very careful. If you are using mm -hmm. a glass glass modules, by default, it will work on 1500 volt. There is no doubt on that, you know. But if you are using a backseat module, what will be your backseat thickness? And I'll ask uh, Dr. Devojo Desarangi on that, you know. So you can suggest, you know, what, why I can ensure that my 1500 volt, it will work, you know, with the kind, we can withstand, you know, this kind of high voltage. So the 1500 volt, uh, there is a little bit of uh, design changes also on the modules like uh, the clippage distance for the sales and uh, that is also changed, it's has been increases. Mm. And also the back seat has really need to be really more than 300 micron uh, thicker. So do you really sustain this kind of voltages? Um, yes, and also the main important thing is that you really need to use the encapsulant, uh, which is really supporting the PID. The more you are uh, going to the voltage, the getting the potential induced degradation is really high and high. Though, um, yeah, there are a lot of things like from the very beginning, from the solar cells, uh, to the module manufacturing, to the installation, there are different initiatives has been taken to really minimize the potential induced degradations, but really not happening all the times because there is always probability that it is coming. So, yeah, I, I think. Uh, yeah, Vinit, also you can uh, suggest something, you know, how the bombs would be for 1500 volt to ensure that this will work, you know, with the backseat based module. See, uh, when we talk of uh, from the manufacturing perspective, as rightly pointed out by uh, Naushad sir as well, see, uh, as the voltage increases from 1000 to 1500 and maybe when we are talking of 2000 volt also, from our perspective, see, uh, or from maybe from shifting from mono to mono per, so our per watt production goes down because from the same cycle, we are getting more uh, number of wattages and at the same cost. So in that case, uh, that cost is being shared with the developers. So you can actually reduce the overall cost of the plant since module is contributing around 40 to 50% of the total uh, cost of the system. So that way it is very beneficial. So likewise, uh, okay. thank you, thank likewise you. moving from mono to mono perk as well. Yeah. If say uh, from say 320 poly, if you are moving to 375 per mono perk, so that is straight away a jump of around 20%. Yeah. True. So what Vinit is telling, like if you are going from a poly, which is 17 and half percent say efficiency, that means in an ideal condition at 12 noon, you are generating 175 watt per square meter. If we go for a mono, say, which is say 21 percent efficiency, that means in 12 noon or what we simulate in our sun simulator is something like 210 watt per square meter, you know, because the sun is coming like a thousand watt per square meter and how much you are converting into the electricity is the efficiency, right? So like that. But what is uh, today is very, very important from 2010 onwards, you know, so far there were several installations. We are not concerned a lot of quality part, you know, so there is a golden word. It is very expensive to install 
a cheap quality module. That means if we sacrifice in any of this kind of the quality, so what we get a long rather than what we calculate like 25 years is life, you know, the degradation should be, you know, after first year should be very, very stable and the linear. But what happens, you know, if we see or uh, look into the site, you know, even five years as after six years, there are a lot of delaminations, there are a lot of uh, visual defect, the, you know, uh, the corrosions and the lot of other yielding of your EVA and all. We have seen a lot of things. So DK, can you suggest us uh, something about the looking into the quality, how to improve, so particularly on the factory oriented where you are sending your product with your online inspection, pre-shipment inspections and your, you know, the container loading and all. In Q cells, uh, we have uh, defined uh, quality. quality parameters, and uh, now for 1500 volt per se, we have identified BOM for India. Um, as I mentioned in my first introductory part, I just said that for India now we have to follow a specified India related BOM. Global large makers cannot depend on one set of bomb because I have to, as a producer, I have to manage my the component supplies. And uh, these days, from the commercial aspect, it has to be just in time delivery is coming in. I have uh, basically seven or eight. Uh, set of components. All are equivalent, but depending on the timing of supplies, payment cycles, we manage the supplies from them. In general, if I come to India for uh, getting the BIS with all uh, seven or eight set of CDF, my cost goes up by seven or eight times. In India, we say that this is the residual market. At this moment, we have gone ahead with one set of bomb for 1000 volt and for 1500 volt also. We have uh, polycrystalline modules in Q cell. We are going to phase out the polycrystalline module from July onwards. So, from July to December, basically, we will be having only monopack module which is BIS certified and that could be supplied to India and post January uh, 2020 from January onwards we will be having all the production capacities shifted to monopack half cut. So all 10 gigawatt is going to be uh, shifted to monopack half cut. The uh, component selections as Dr. Samantha is asking so we say that uh, KPE is the uh, back sheet, uh, 300 micron is there and uh, white uh, EVA is there and the aluminum frame is an alloy frame which is uh, tested to uh, uh, predominantly take the loads, the uh, wind pressure, the front load, back load and uh, the other paste and other all other things are um, uh, taken considering the parameters to support the 1500 volt conditions yeah yes uh, what dick has already told you know there are two type of quality one is that uh, the factory there is an ongoing production is going on which is called the factory quality control and what is that incoming material which is coming and in the store they check it you know so all the uh, materials has got a defined uh, specifications and uh, there is a test lab, they test it. If the test facility is not there, they bring the COC, if that is an expensive item or they cannot check, you know, say for example, if uh, the transmittivity of the particular glass, glass is also anti-deflection coated glass, you know, and this anti-deflection coated glass, the thickness of this anti-deflection coating is sometimes is a big challenge, you know, for uh, the module manufacturer to check the thickness of so the it is believe on the coc so like that there is a, a quality control what he has told like you know right from the glass eva backseat tedler uh, and your aluminum 
a channel. Channel is also anodized and also anodized in thickness, whether it will withstand the high voltage or something like that. You know. So all these things, you know, is uh, very defined and the way it is quality control is maintained, you know. For any factories, I think everybody is uh, doing that one. Yeah. Uh, but moreover, you know, what Ritu was pointing out after lunch, the session is that, you know, post factory, that means when the material is loading in the, the container and then the shipping, then reaching at the side, unloading the pallet, opening the box, and then keeping the modules on. So that is do and don'ts has to be followed. You know, otherwise, you do not know, you will see that there are several micro crack. If only one person is carrying, say, maybe 300, uh, you know, 75 watt modules, and which is much bigger, is almost like a two meter by one meter, you know. So, and keeping on the head, you know, and he doesn't know uh, that what is a micro crack and how he can see. So uh, normally what you call a EL inspections, EL means electroluminescence, you know. So what does it do actually? Like uh, in, in a human body, you know, if we have a, any kind of a crack, we check it with x-ray, like there is a crack, you know, either a hair crack or something like, you know, or a big crack or a, a, a fracture or something like that. So in silicon, you know, so what does it do actually in the forward biasing, depending on the VOC and IC, you know, uh, maybe 10% more, it is applied in the forward bias and silicon is a kind of a material, you know, where it gives a infrared radiations and there are several cameras is captured, you know, I mean, the infrared, as you know, this kind of a silicon material is also using in the uh, CC, you know, TVs and all, you know. So anyway, this kind of material in also captured, you know, in the camera and try to find out if there is a crack or not, you know. Even today, there are some factory in China is that, you know, it is done completely computerized automatics. See, always a human, if you look into the human error, there are 72 cells, you know, he cannot check and every each one that there is a micro crack or not, you know. So there is a software available, both the visual as well as real inspections and that gives an idea, you know, like, yes, there is a micro crack, is there is one or two at what what is the matrix in you know, at what positions, you know. So uh, looking all sort of things, you know, we will come back to this on the quality side, you know. Uh, I think Gaurav, uh, I think, yeah. yeah. I would like to seek your permission to tell you now. The cell technology and the module manufacturing has also come uh, a long way. As um, uh, Dr. Samantha and, and, Dr. and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, other uh, panelists have mentioned that uh, the cell used to be a round cell and now it has come to uh, 158 by 158 kind of. Then you look at the bus bars also. Now bus bars have been very significant development. Now we have moved from two bus bar to six bus bar and now uh, 12 bus bar the wire technology is coming. 